In the past five years, the world of watches has completely exploded on the collector level. Much of this can be attributed to the rise of online content and forums where people can share their enthusiasm with those that are like-minded. But working in tandem with the rise of general enthusiasm, there's also been a phenomenon within the luxury segment that has led to select models and brands that have skyrocketing secondary market trading values. As a result, we have seen an increased fascination with the concept of investment watches and seeing watches as an asset class. In this video, I want to discuss this idea of investment watches further, the good, the bad, the ugly, and why I think this is one of the biggest conundrums for the watch industry at the moment. This idea of investment pieces was something I thought was ridiculous years ago. And in many ways it was. Making money in watches was seldom done apart from the buy low and sell high principle of reselling that can extend to nearly every good trading. But through the inability to walk in and buy certain models at retail, hype, COVID lockdowns, rise in sales in Asia, quantitative easing, and a centralized consumer interest for a few brands, listed trading prices for select watches saw appreciation. Now, as humans, we like to focus only on the wins and not on the losses in these type of scenarios. However, let's address a few examples of these unicorns that help lead the charge in adopting this concept of watches being investments. First with the Rolex Daytona 116-500LN. This watch at new retails at $13,150 and trading $40,000 to $50,000. AP Royal Oak Jumbo, 15202, $31,300 new, trading price $100,000 to $110,000. Then you have the Patek Philippe Nautilus 5711-1A014, new $34,890, trading value $400,000, and that's if they actually show up for sale. Then you have the Richard Mill RM055, the Bubba Watson, new $120,000, trading price $400,000. These are just a few of the most extreme examples across the industry with contemporary models. And this is just scratching the surface and not looking into the world of vintage timepieces. With these examples at the high end leading the way, it seems to have caused a stir in the market where everyone wants a piece and thinking that all watches in general are appreciating assets across the board. Yet ignorance with overly optimistic views usually never ends well. And although this video is not a video about investing advice, I just wanna make that clear, Let's discuss a little bit more in detail on the good, the bad, and ugly uh, from my perspective when it comes to this multifaceted idea. First, let's discuss the good. With there being monetary interest in watches, it has allowed watchmaking to become more relevant to particular segments of the market that previously were never being reached. This is good for watchmakers and retailers to allow the industry to flourish and get newcomers interested. Because let's be real, an interest in watches is a very particular one, but this has also allowed the interest on the diehard enthusiast spectrum to be as strong as it's ever been, arguably. The talk of monetary gain has led to more press, coverage, and general discussion around high-end watchmaking than normal. And discussion around the craft, good or bad, is still attention. And for the industry, I think that's ultimately better than no one talking at all. I remember the amount of people who had no interest in watches sending me press articles when Paul Newman's Daytona sold at auction. These types of scenarios subconsciously pushes watches into the spotlight for those who normally would never look in their direction, especially for those younger consumers as many of the brands have done an inadequate job in reaching age demographics in their teens, 20s, and early 30s. But then moving to the bad, it also comes with the question, is a flood of new people coming in with an opportunistic mindset a good thing? Now, I will say this first. I hate the gatekeeper mentality that any interest group can have for newcomers. The elitist BS that some collectors have is annoying and I think any genuine interest in watches nowadays should be welcomed with open arms. Although that's the thing, the point of interest around monetary value creates consumers that are only looking to get into watchmaking as a way to hold value or make money. Now, I have a business in selling watches, so I do not wanna act holier than thou here, but I can genuinely say I love watches, and when I first posted a video five years ago of my humble watch collection, I had this timid delivery, I didn't know what I was doing, I had no agenda, I just thought these things were cool, and I liked how they could just allow us to express ourselves with our own individuality. I just posted a video, and at the time, that's really how I wanted to just share something that I was interested in. But the point really is here, there were many individuals who were introduced to watches as a market opportunity, not a love for the art form. And I'm not trying to necessarily say whether this mentality is always insidious, 
But knowing the world of collecting before this was a thing, it has made it difficult for people to look at certain brands the same way. And honestly, it's kind of frustrating. As much as I believe there was always a feeling of exclusivity when buying a Rolex, I do think that five to 10 years ago when somebody bought a Rolex, it didn't come with all the strings attached like today. Sure, you still get a brand that was as recognizable as any, but with owning one then, it was a mark of accomplishment in your life. Instead, now it comes with the baggage of ownership tied to empty displays, wait lists, hype, and a culture all about conspicuously flaunting. But I think the ugliest issue here is how this new established thought process of solely seeing watches as investments can alienate the strongest proponents of the craft. The market right now is as hot as it's ever been. So pissing off some customers with lack of transparency of allocation and production might slide for the time being, but what if we enter another global dip in the economy or general interest in brands decreases over time? That core base you are neglecting today will have moved on to other brands or another category altogether outside of watches. This is even more the case with younger consumers since if you have an individual who grew up during a period where watches were not a necessary tool to wear on the wrist to tell the time, then how can you expect them to appreciate a luxury product that has never made reaching out to them a priority and when they do, they're met with an inability to acquire that very product itself. This adds pressure for all those involved and has perpetuated a flipping culture that causes a top heavy industry where only a group of three to seven brands are talked about over and over again. And many fantastic brands are not considered as a byproduct of the resale value. This manifests itself to the highest degree in the auction business where things get even more dicey. Let's look at a somewhat recent example of the Tiffany Blue Dial Nautilus that went up for auction. This watch came after several questionable stirring of the pot decisions by Patek, first discontinuing the 5711 in blue despite its popularity, then announcing a green dial successor, which had no communication on delivery, and then months later, we saw the Patek Philippe Nautilus 5711 Tiffany Dial with limited production. Its list value was at $52,635, the one went up for auction, $6.5 million. This number for the auction was crazy enough, but it also led many to speculate that there was maybe something fishy going on. As the buyer was said to be based in New York and the connection to charity does raise questions whether we are maybe killing two birds with one stone here, raising your market value and hype and also getting a nice tax right off in the process. And I know some might be saying, well, let the ultra wealthy play their games. This doesn't impact the watches that I enjoy. But these types of watch auctions are the ones that extend beyond the circles of enthusiasts and become the source of popular opinion towards the interest overall. A game where no one can play and the fatiguing spotlight constantly illuminates the same tiring cast members that we are fed up of seeing. This in turn also creates many people that are looking for watches in the lower segments where they ask questions about what watches will go up in value under X dollar amount. The truth is the watch industry, apart from a few brands, is more like a less extreme example of the car industry. Once you drive it off the lot, you are not going to be able to get the same dollar amount you paid or more than what you paid. No one buys a Dodge Grand Caravan and heads to a different dealership waiting for their big payday. But given the few watches that have gone mad, there has been a widespread misconception about their endless examples of watches ready to be purchased and flipped for a profit. However, unless you're talking about a very specific limited edition or models from Rolex, Patek, AP, Richard Mill, FP Journe, and other independents, chances are you're not going to see any return. And this is while the market is hot. Imagine if we enter another recession. So what's my take in just generally speaking about this watches as investment idea. I've kind of put down this idea because when I was getting into watches, the idea of retaining value and seeing watches as an asset class was just not something that crossed my mind, but it has become a reality for many people out there. But I think it's important to keep the context all in front of you. There is good to this, there's bad to this, and there's ugly. I think ultimately at the end of the day, if people are talking more about watches, it is ultimately good for the industry. So I don't wanna get this mixed up. If people are excited about it, whatever their intentions are, I don't think that's a bad thing. But I will say this, as somebody who is an enthusiast, and I think I can speak for many people that have been into watches for some time, you're kind of are fatigued with the same old watch after watch just being mentioned again and again. We know who they are. We, we've seen them over and over again. And I think it has created a fatigue in the market where we're just tired of it. I would like to be able to cover and look at all different types of watch segments, which I think I do pretty well. I don't wanna cover just the same old, same old at the high end, just everything that's hyped, because that gets boring. 
And it's just this tiring idea that keeps being just pushed forward and forward. And in general, I think most people just have this investing mindset with like the rise of uh, crypto and NFTs where they just think everything has to be this great profit generation and just engine for their life. But in watches, we're talking about a crap that's centuries old. Sure, there are going to be within an enthusiast world models that are going to appreciate in value. That exists and I think it will continue to exist. Uh, but the market is very different right now and it's going to change. And if there's one thing I would say is, if you like watches, I would not ask the question, what watch is gonna go up in value? Because 99% of the time, it's not going to happen. I think you, you buy the watch because you enjoy it and that's really all you can do. That's why I fell in love with these things and I really do think that this idea is rather tiring and it'd be great to be able to start to put the shift and focus on things outside of just what their uh, value is in the secondary market or how much hype is being uh, associated with that brand or model. My take, of course, I'd love to see your guys' take down below. Do you think the idea of investment watches are good, bad, or maybe somewhere in between for the industry? Uh, love to see those comments. I know people that are really into watches have a very mixed kind of thought process around this. I think we do have to address the idea that more people talking about our interest is good overall for the industry, but is there a point where it almost goes too far? I'd love to see those comments. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. Really would appreciate that as well. And of course, check out teddyballstar.com, full authorized dealer of 30 brands as well. Quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, and a full factory warranty for all the products that we offer. And also have a great Instagram account. If you want to stay up to date with the content, see some great photos of watches, be sure to check that out as well. Guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I'll see you all very soon.